Hey everybody, um, I thought I would do you an unboxing of a game called The Story Master's Tales Draco Deep Dungeon and it's from a guy called Oliver McNeil um, and you can check his stuff out at, over at, at the Story Master's um, Tales.co.uk sorry, .com even, storymasterstales.com uh, This is a Kickstarter that I've backed uh, He had had a previous game out uh, called The Weirding Woods which... I will put some links down below or in this screen where you can see one the unboxing for that but also the gameplay uh, and this is the next version of that game so he did an expansion for that game which is really cool uh, but this is actually the next adventure in that series um, Draco Deep Dungeon so there we go there's the box it's got a nice uh, foil there um, hopefully the camera's picking it up nicely but yeah um, so if you've seen the previous one you know exactly what this is about um, but if not I'll try and explain to you as the best I can so it is what I would call uh, a really family friendly role playing game it sits somewhere between full on Dungeons and Dragons type storytelling um, and then sort of a tabletop uh, card game right? And it, and it sits nicely in between there uh, I've played this with my family many, many times from a, and with people from as young as four um, right up to uh, me, who I'm clearly not. I'm ten times that, let's be frank. So, uh, yeah, we absolutely love it. It's a great game. Uh, and then when we saw the second one was coming out, we, we, we jumped on board without any hesitation. Um, Oliver McNeil is a guy who, um, if you look him up on Facebook, I've only met the guy once, I met him at uh, UK Games Expo when he was initially showing the very first version of Weirding Woods um, and we played with him there and the guy loves what he does, very enthusiastic, you know, does the full role play, um, great at storytelling, is involved in lots of things uh, and you can see that he's throwing all that love and passion of this kind of uh, genre uh, into his work. So yeah had no hesitation whatsoever and because of the quality of the first game and the expansion that came with it um, I had no worries whatsoever jumping on the second one and I'm sure I already know that he's doing some next games which I think is going to be more Cthulhu based and looks pretty cool so I'll be all over that as well right okay so let's have a look in here so very well presented I'll show you the box up here so it's you know Nice size box, easily travel, take it on travel if you want. It's really presented very well. Um, great quality cardboard, great graphics, you know, great artwork. This is like, uh, the, the image on the front here is some sort of, uh, could be a djinn, could be a demon, could be a, you know, a fae of some description. But yeah, the Story Master's Tales, Draco Deep Dungeon. And I'll try and explain the game as I sort of go through it. But let's have a quick look at the stuff first. And then I'll, I'll tell you what the game's about. So inside, deck of cards. Very important deck of cards. We'll open this up in a second, have a look. But I think there's 50 cards there. Um, and, well, there's 50 cards, but there'll also be cards for rewards and other bits and pieces. But we'll go for that in a second. Uh, a lovely bag. The other games come with all the bits you need in the bag. So inside you will find, much like the other ones, four pencils. So four players, this is the pencil you'll need. And then within there also a D4. So pretty much the entire game is played using a couple of D4s. And even then, one for the one for the dungeon master as it were. Um, although the dungeon master can move around in, within a family if they want to do that. And then a D4 for the active player. But if you've got a bunch of these laying around, definitely give one to everybody. They can even pick their own dice. You have a bunch of pebbles, uh, and these essentially will um, act as your character, but there is also standees in the box, and you could also, um, as I've done, start painting up some miniatures to represent your character. Uh, and then little plastic holders here for those standees, which I shall show you as we go through. Here's the main bulk of it. This is the uh, the book. It is not only your rule book, but also your story book. Um, 
to show what's going to happen throughout your adventure. I won't show too much of it, but I will pick a couple of pages to show you. Because um, obviously that's where all the spoilers are as well. So we don't want to go. Through, we don't want to go too deep into that. Your character sheets, um, very reminiscent of something like Hero Quest or that kind of game, or Fighting Fantasy, and that's actually what also what this this system is like. Very much akin to a Fighting Fantasy type style. So, you know, recording your character, any notes, you know, what's in the, what they may have picked up in the inventory, item skills, and then any monsters they may come up against. And also there is a turn counter around the edge, which is uh, representing um, uh, time. There we go. Uh, the last thing in here is what I said, is the standees. Uh, so the idea is you can cut these out, fold them in half, and then, so I'm trying to get those on the, on the camera a bit better for you. But yeah, cut these out, fold them in half, plug them into one of these little stands, and there you go, your character is represented. So the rogue, the royal, the monk, the, the pirate, the thief, the red cap, the soldier, the huntsman, the witch, the wizard. And I think there's another one in here as well, which is um, the scientist and the highlander. I like the look of the highlander. He looks very cool. If I can get him on there. There we go. So, what is the game, you ask? Right, well, let's open these cards and then I'll try and do a very quick explanation of it. But yeah, everything's super high quality and great box smell, by the way. Very nice new box smell. Let's, uh, let's open this up. As you can see, I definitely haven't opened it because I haven't even gone into the cards yet. So let's, uh, I can't seem to make that work. So I'm just gonna cut across there. Uh, with my little handy blade. There we go. So this will be broken up into reward cards. So I'll get I'll take this off the top. Standard sort of card like playing card size, so easily to easy to be sleeved. Um, there's more reward cards than I thought. Uh, so there we go. So that's all of the reward cards. Okay, so reward cards. Kill a monster. Um, you know, um, loot uh, uh, a cave, um, find a treasure chest. Hey, you're gonna come across um, treasure cards. And these have all sorts of things in them. One, they have some value. Two, they might have some benefit to your character, like your fight, the plus one to fighting skill or, or defense. And then a bit of a story about what it is. And again, I don't really wanna show you too much of these. Uh, and even I don't wanna look, because I, I genuinely like just finding them in the game without reading too much. Um, yeah, so they can be good, bad, and there's, yeah, there's even bad ones. There's even some things in there that you might pick up uh, that could have a negative effect on you, um, but might be a, a quest item you need. So keep those to one side, and they will be. They do also serve sort of another purpose, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, that is your reward cards for your uh, your adventure, right? Now you have story cards. And again, I don't want to show you too much of these, but we'll take a couple. We'll do the first five. And then I'm not going to show you any more, okay? So we've got the rat, the throne room, the ghoul, the armory, and the leprechaun. Really cool artwork again. Uh, yeah, just super good stuff. I'm looking over here. I'm just making sure it's on uh, on focus for you. But yeah, you get the gist. So, you play the game like this. You would normally have a starting card. Um, in the reading wood, it was the inn. Uh, and there was also a sort of marketplace you could go and buy equipment from. So your character... So that I'm going to pretend in our story, we start in the throne room. Okay? So we're in the throne room. And say this is me. I'm blue, and this is you, you're red, okay? And our quest is to go and find and kill uh, the leprechaun. That's our story. Um, the stories are set out in the book, but again, we're not gonna read one of those, we're just gonna make it up as we go. Um, so, you know, some, you know, the, the king and queen have asked us that this leprechaun has put a curse on their family, and we need to go and, uh, you know, destroy him. Um, I'm sure that's not the story in the book, I'm sure there's many others. Um, oh. 
my PC just went off. Let me just check I'm still here. This will be good. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you've been asked to go and do that. So, you would say, right, I'm going to head from the throne room. And I would say to you, which direction do you want to go? And you'd say, oh, I'd like to go north. So, I'd lay a card on, on the north here. And I'd go, okay, well, you're heading out to the north. I'm going to go looking to the east. Look to the east. And I'd lay a card there as well. We'd move you out to the north, me out to the west, east. Pop these down. Okay. We flip your card over, you're at the armory, we flip my card over, and I am at, oh, 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 there we go, I am at the ghoul. We would then take our book and read what had happened. So your card is number four, so I would simply go through the book, find card number four, and read this to you. Lit by a single candle, it is hard to see in the gloom. Where your eyes adjust, you see many weapons and pieces of armour. An old guard with a very long beard is looking up and, up and down. Do you talk to the old guard about the dungeon? Who knows? Ask if you could buy something. Blow the candle out and steal something. Or attack the guard. There we go. That's your choices. Uh, and each one of those choices has a consequence. So um, the the player wouldn't know what those consequences are. You would just give them the four options and say, right, do you want to do you want to talk about your your adventure? You know this this dungeon you've heard about. Do you want to buy something? Have you got some gold? Do you want to buy a weapon or some armor? Do you want to try and be sleight of hand and steal something, uh, or do you want to attack the guard? Maybe you have a quest from some other time where this guy is actually a, a criminal and you need to take him down. So those are your options. And then you choose one, and then the story master would then tell you what happened, and you would potentially have to do some other little things. So, let's say you buy something from him. You use your gold, and you would find out what you've bought from the reward cards, and, and do that. If you were to fight, if you were to try and steal from him, you would roll something called your um, your fortune to see how lucky you are. Uh, and everyone seems to start with, um, you know, when, when you look at when you get your stats going. I realise I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm trying to kind of give you a little flavour of it without playing the actual game. Uh, one of your stats would be, there we go, would be your fortune. And your fortune might start at four. So you can roll a d4 and you know you're pretty much going to make it. You're going to roll under your fortune and you're going to be fine. But each time you use your fortune, it loses one. So now my fortune's gone from four to three. So next time if I roll a four, I might be unlucky. But uh, that would be your turn. And then the next person would have a go. So I'm at the ghoul. And I'm sure my options are things like, let's have a quick look. So three. Now you could. This is where you could either have someone being the story master throughout, or you could now pass the book to someone else and have them read your passage. So leaping out of nowhere is the living death that is a ghoul, with sharp claws and slathering tongue. It lunges to attack you. Roll your fate. There we go. So this is just a straight up fate roll. This is. I don't get to choose what happens, the dice is going to choose what happens. So I would roll my dice, I get a 1. And 1 is, it splashes out at you, it slashes out at you with its claws. Um, there you go. And then there will be a passage that tells me exactly what happens when it slashes out at me with its claws. Uh, and by the looks of it, it's a, a fortune roll. So there we go, that would take my fortune down again. Um, so I'm already down, you know, I've, I maybe lost one because of the previous card, and the second one loses another one. Um, so I'm getting less lucky as we go on. Now, there is a way to get your fortune back, but um, again, that will come through other cards. And I will end up fighting this ghoul or taking some damage from this ghoul. There we go. So once we've then both done our cards, we would move on. We've done that card. We would move on with our adventure. Um, and you might say, ah. Oh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, for the sake of me having not much room here, I'm gonna move to the west. So there we go. We put a card down to the west, and you carry on your adventure. I might say, you know what? I think I need more information from the queen, king and queen. I'm gonna go back to the throne room to see if I can find out more about this leprechaun. And we would go on. So I would now read the passage for the throne room and hope that there is something in there I can do. And you would find yourself at the rat. He looks like a very gentleman rat and have an interaction with him and keep developing the story. And as you can imagine, to have a much larger space than this, 
Um, your characters, uh, your players will start to branch out in many directions, reading the passages from the book. By all means, ad lib to pieces. I tend to do that when I'm reading to my kids anyway. Um, because some of the, if they're younger, some of the decisions, they might not quite understand what they mean. So just elaborate. Make them more uh, kin to your family. It's absolutely fine. Um, and play out the quest. And there we have it. You are role-playing without having to think too much about can I make a story up. Being a dungeon master is no easy job um, to make up all the things you need to do. But with this book and these cards and then the flavour that you can add on top, uh, you can do an awesome job of being a dungeon master with family and friends. And like I say, I've played this with very young kids and they absolutely love it. Uh, and also they've been the Dungeon Master, so I let them read the book, and I just play as a player. So, yeah, I'm not sure what else I can say about it. Um, Oliver McNeil, go and check him out on Facebook. You know, head over to storymasters.com and have a look at the previous game that he's got. Um, there are, I have done videos on them as well. I've also done a Let's Play, um, so you can look at that. Uh, you know, there's 50 pages in here, so 50 types of adventure. 50 types of encounter that you can have um, I know it's compatible with the previous game as well so this one's very dungeon centric it's about heading into a deep dungeon the other one was about going into a, uh, a spooky woods which would have you know trolls and bridges and and witches and and uh, you know even caves and all sorts of weird and wonderful things you could come across and very strange characters you could come across um, but you can mix the two games together, I believe. So you can take card, you can make a fifty card deck of some of the dungeon, and some of the weirding woods, and then have a completely new adventure. Uh, so I think you're talking well over a hundred cards at that point, um, with you know four options on each card. So over a hundred cards. Uh, you know, even each of the four options can then have sub sub decisions to be made. So the number of combinations you can have is pretty significant. Um, and you can, yeah, play, play, play again. There we go. Um, so that's it. That is uh, Story Masters Tales, uh, Draco Deep Dungeon. It's super good. It's not an expensive game at all for the quality of the materials you're getting in there. And if you're interested at all about, you know, storytelling with your family, um, especially actually in this time, if you're watching this video now, we are in a global pandemic and that would be quite a cool time to spend some time with the family um, and play some games because a lot of us are staying indoors right now. If you're watching this in the future and that's all gone and been done, it's still a great time to get down with the family and play some cool games. So, yeah, check it out. My dog is now barking, so I best go um, and see what she's barking at. Uh, but, uh, yeah, head over to storymasterstales.com I've backed it. I think it's brilliant. I think the previous game was great. I'm looking forward to all the stuff he does in the future. I think you should look at it too. All right. I'll see you again. Uh, if you follow me on Twitch uh, for live paint, like live stream painting and live stream uh, tabletop gaming, so twitch.tv slash laughingboy, or give me a like and subscribe here on YouTube, and similar content ends up in here eventually when I copy it over. But yeah, thanks everybody. See you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.